Hey guys, Matty Extreme Auto Car and Camping with you again. Another big off-grid setup in a Crusader. I need a quick video for this one because I am time poor today. So this overlay system, old oh mate wanted a lot of solar and we've done that 1400 watts of solar. <laughs> Three solar controllers taking care of that in the roof. So I'll run through it with you. We've gone for the Victron 130 here, taking care of 400 watts. This other 100 here, 30 taking care of another 400 watts. And then this 150 here taking care of 600 watts. So this one here has three 200 watt panels on it. This one here has two 200 watt panels on it. And this one here has four 100 watt panels on it. So that's combined 1.4 kilowatts, guys. Now this is running two Enerdrive BTEC 300 amp hour batteries in parallel. It's giving these guys a total of 600 amp hours of lithium battery storage. Massive upgrade from the original system. We've retained the Red Arc Manager 30 on this. However, no roof solar is going through this anymore. The solar input on this is down on an Anderson plug so he can plug in a portable panel. So the solar input on this is still used, but just for portable only on top of these. The DC to DC charger on this is still used as well for vehicle charging through the Anderson plug, as well as the mains plug, uh, mains charger, which is here. So the Red Arc Manager is still in situ and it still controls all the loads and everything through it. This Manager 30 has the big shunt, massive shunt, able to monitor this new inverter, which is the Enerdrive 2600, and all of this solar coming in. These guys are gonna get well over 100 amps of solar coming in. It's a huge setup. So the Red Arc shunt, um, being a 500 amp shunt, it has that resolution. So we're able to wire up all of these new charge controllers, the high current devices, and the new inverter through that shunt. And we've used a 100 mil square cable, really thick cable for this, a single run instead of the 250 that we normally do. We're very struck for space on this, so we've used the flexi cable, and that's absolutely perfectly um, set up well here. So we've gone for the blue trunking here to hide all the Victron stuff. This is all in the back boot area in the original factory location. It's a bit of a tight spot, even though there's plenty of room now. Oh mate, once he puts stuff in here, he's probably gonna put a division here and hide all this off. So MIDI fuses, a &L fuses, large high current stuff to suit the application. Every terminal and lug is bolted down, hydraulically crimped. Um, we're running really, really heavy stuff here. We've got big charge rates here. So this Manager 30 will put in its DC charging on top of these three solar controllers. So on a sunny day, if these guys are driving, the potential charge rate going into this 600 amp hour lithium battery bank is like 125 to 130 easy, any day of the week in good sun. These solar controllers will charge at the same time as the DC charger. So just to put that number into comparison for you to um put it on par with what something draws. This has an Ibis 3, and it will pull about 90 amps to 100 amps an hour. Even this solar setup is enough to keep up with an old Ibis 3 roof clunker. This DC charger will come in on top of that while he's driving. So these guys are able to run their air conditioner while they're driving, cool their van down, so when they rock up at camp, don't have to worry about a stinking hop caravan to set up. This is a pretty cool setup. I'm very happy with how this has come up. Um, it's been a bit tedious because of the, um, the way the original battery was set up. We've just squeezed it in over the side. We've had to relocate all of the earths. It's, um, it's been a bit nasty, but um, I'm really happy with how this has come up. And so was I, mate. We just ran the induction cooker on full pelt and had the Ibis 3 running both at the same time. You can't exceed that. We were hitting the limits of that 2600 watt inverter, but hey, it was doing it. And that's, that's what the purpose of the tests are for, to see what the system can do and how long for. I'm unable to test solar here. I'm at Williamstown Caravan Park and we are under a massive ash tree that is raining sap <laughs> all over me and shade, which is good for the summer. So they've got three, 400 watts, uh, but that's not the point of, uh, this video, this point of this video is to show you the setup, what it's capable of doing, 
what it has and old mate's going to send me some snapshots as he starts to free camp and give me some numbers to see what it's done and i can log into these you know well he sorry he can log onto these on his phone and he'll send me snapshots of the history on each one of these um probably after about a week of free camping just so i can get an understanding of what these solar controllers have hit on each of their setup so um yeah two in parallel no two in series on this one so the two 200s are in series so 40 volt open circuit three in series on the 600 watt setup so the three 200 watt panels three in series um, 62 volt open circuit and this one is two in series two in parallel so 42 point something voc onto this one on the other 400 watts so um big cable runs on these guys but the amperage the load on these lines uh, doesn't exceed what one panel can do so um the load on the four 100s is about nine amps how good's that so i'm transferring nine amps from the roof all the way to this point it's brilliant that's why we're able to do that yeah it'll produce its full maximum 30. cool this 5100 with the 600 watts in it the load on that is about the same nine to ten amps over the same distance so and that's able to produce 600 watt that'll be like 45 odd amps or something so happy days and same with the other one the load's about oh, about nine or nine or ten amps over the same distance so on the pv side the current is very minimal and that's why we're able to transfer such high power from the roof down here because we run it at that higher voltage you can only do it in certain setups you cannot do it in every setup guys it's all to do with shade if you shade one panel and, and that's on a series string you will diminish that array and that's why we have three solar controllers so if all of these three are taking care of their own little system on their roof bringing it down here to one uniform charge because these three are networked together so all of these are talking to each other so a little blue light flashing here on all of these they're in bulk mode now all right so as this battery fills up these will move to absorb all simultaneously so all three of these will move to their next stage of charge once the batteries are full then it'll she'll go to float when you put an air conditioner on or you put a heavy load on these will automatically move back to bulk to ready to charge that they're in sync with each other they they act as one solar controller um you know if i were to have i don't know a different brand solar controller here a different brand here a different brand here yeah they'll all charge but they'll all have different parameters they don't really work with each other it's not best to do it you'll get a much better result if you do this and the proof's in the pointing guys you guys see my numbers i'm getting stupid numbers out of these settings so oh, there goes my knee <laughs> Give it a go guys, I'll cheekily show you the roof, just a couple of snappies of the roof. I'm not going to get the drone out, I'm at a caravan park, um, be a bit frowned upon. But that's the setup, I'll take you inside, press some buttons and uh, I'll old mate's induction cooker there and I'll get that air conditioner to kick back in and you can see what the uh, InnoDrive 2600 watt inverter does. It might suit your setup. Um, it is a high frequency inverter guys, so the fan on this will be going flat out all the time. Zip you around. So that inner drive inverter, the, we vented the back of it. I'll show you the vent when we get inside. So underneath the inverters, there's a there's a big grill plate and that's where it draws air in. And then the hot air comes out the back here. Okay, so the hot air comes out the back. So that's inducting. So if you're running air conditioner inside the van, you're, you're pulling cool air in from the inside and it's pushing the hot air out at the back. That's the only time they're really gonna ramp up um, because you're running a continual heavy low for hours on end. So as you can see, this is how it worked for a few days. <laughs> Anyway, I'll take you inside. Right, here we are in the lovely Crusader. So the Red Arc factory system, they've installed it here. We've just put the remote in the old original, because this had an inner drive 2000 watt inverter, the old previous model with the old switch to turn it on. We've put the remote in its place and neatened it up for him. So these guys, we're free camping right now. We've unplugged mains and uh, I'll just put this on. So we're 59% started charge at the moment. We've been drawing some power at it. We're pulling about, uh, we're actually pushing in 10 amps. I don't know how much solar we're getting. We can't be getting too much, but obviously we're getting a bit more than 10 amps because some lights are on and the fridge is running, which I can hear the compressor fridge running. So we're probably pulling, putting in about 15 amps in the shade. That's only possible when you've got 1,400 watts on the roof. How good is that? Anyway, wait for it. All right, so that beeping you heard, so the first beep was me turning the drive inverter on. The other beeps was the microwave and the Ibis 3. We'll grab that remote and we'll whack that puppy on. Roof clunker. We'll go 18. 18 full cold. 
and we'll get that running. Now we had this puppy going on full pelt while that's running. And I actually thought it would be, it would overload it and throw a, an error code like on, cause you, if you exceed 2600 watts on the end of drive inverters, they'll give you an alarm and then shut down. Um, but this one kind of didn't. Anyway, we'll go to, so we're pulling a thousand watts right now. You can see the number there. So you, with your Android inverter, obviously power on, and then this will scroll through the menu, essentially. So voltage, wattage. So 980, odd, it's close enough to 1,000 watts, 950. Oh. Now in amps, because the red arc shunt is the only thing monitoring, so we're pulling nearly 70 amps from the battery. You can see it, see how the loads and the battery are identical. So power is coming out of the battery. You can see that little arrow there. So for you guys that add a um, a big charging system on a Red Arc Manager, all doable. You just got to remember it's not going to be shown under solar because you're not using that solar input for the roof array anymore. You know that's the light showing it's dead. There's nothing there. So that that little solar sign now is just for the side end of the plug. So if old mate plugs a portable panel in, that'll show up there. But all those other charge controllers are still monitored. It's just as a total. Okay, so if I were to shut down all the solar controllers with my Victron app and go in every one of them, because it's putting in about 15 odd amps, you would see 15 added to that number. So whatever you see on here, whatever you do is still relevant. And that's the beautiful thing about the systems that we do. They're an overlay system. So if you've got a factory setup like the BM Pro, the Red Arc Manager, as long as it's got that large shunt or, you know, with the projectors, we have to put the large shunt on it. With the BM Pros, we've got to put the large shunt on it. You're able to put these big charging systems, these big solar setups and these big DC charging systems that we do to be able to give you, you know, the, the free capability and the extended runtime. So this has been programmed to the 600 amp hour, so it's going to read the Enerdrive batteries. Yes, the Enerdrive batteries have their own app that you can log onto the batteries. And funny enough, this was showing 64% when old mate logged on and the batteries were showing the same. Look, you've essentially got three battery monitors now, guys. And the problem with it is you're going to see this everywhere. You're gonna log onto the battery, it's gonna be different. You're gonna log onto this, it's gonna be different. Sorry, you look at this, it's gonna be different. Just pick one, all right? Pick one and go by it because it's there, there's gonna be variances between them. See, that's another reason why I love the Victron battery monitor because I can program every little parameter on it to register and monitor the battery to perfection. I can't program this. I, all I do is set it for lithium and it is what it is. Same with the little battery app in the uh, Enerdrive um, uh, batteries. It is what it is. So. I just recommend picking one and sticking with it. Don't log into each one of them, look at each one of them. It'll just confuse you. And you know, free camping's supposed to be easy. You just wanna look at one thing. So I've told old mate, pick one. And because this is here and it's easily set up, you can see it. I can see we're pulling 68 amps. Right, we're pulling 68 amps and we are 58% state of charge. Just live by that. At the current uses, five hours to go. I'm not getting bugger or sun like 10, 15 amps. We're using 900 watts. Right, that air conditioner's running now, guys. So, I'll show you this. I don't know why that's on. I've never used this one before. Let's go maximum. Huh? 1200. Well, that says 1200. Let's see what that draws. So, that's straight off the inner drive inverter, a little over 2000 watts, and if in amps, straight from the shunt, there it is. Now I'll keep this camera facing this way. We'll crank it up. Just remember the air conditioner's running on, 1600 now. Ibis 3 is running. Back down here, 200 or 2500. We'll go a bit more. Push this end of drive inverter up a bit, eh? 1800. Ibis 3 air conditioner, induction cooker on 1800. We are pulling 2700. It should pull an alarm soon. I think it will. Like, so these Enerdrive 2600 watt inverters. Look at that. What are we pulling? Cool bananas. You gotta remember, I'm in full shade. And you don't believe me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah. I'm in a beautiful spot here. But. We're running 
Ibis 3. Induction cooker. Ah, uh, why not? 2000, let's get this uh, inner drive clipping off. Come on, turn off. 3000 watts. Where's the shutdown? Look at that. What's the voltage? So the inner drive batteries are holding 12.2. Well, that's actually measured at the inverter. Really, we should be going by this because this has that little battery temperature sensor. So 12.5. Take note of the difference. 12.4, um, 12.5, 12.2. So I'm getting a 0.3 of a volt drop over that 100 mil cable about a oh, meter and a bit away. That is completely acceptable pulling 230 odd amps that's beautiful guys that's a big pass this is still running how good is that i actually i thought these would throw an alarm at 2600 as to show you know even even i get surprised from time to time boiling that's on flat out i can't that's it warp speed i can go down so that is on flat out this ibis 3 roof clunker is on flat out cold we are running from batteries guys on the inner drive 2600 watt inverter really good still running cool i'll show you this vent so we just put this 80 mil vent and all it all it's doing is drawing air in so it's facing down so obviously if you're running the air conditioner here it's going to be drawing in cool air it's 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 not it's not required i mean the book doesn't tell you to do it because the inner drive inverter when you when you when you sit it on the floor or you sit it on a wall it's got a gap and under that gap there's a mesh floor and that mesh floor is where it draws air in so we've just helped it along by putting this here just to to induct a bit more airflow into it so instead of recirculating its own air because it's quite enclosed it's going to be drawing cooler air in from here to push it out so that'll just increase its efficiency which is probably why it's doing what it's doing now but oh well we can't be that warm in there this is got a temperature what are we at so we're 27 degrees in the battery area. We're still running. How cool is that? Enjoy that setup, guys. Free camping, beautiful.